Thank you uh, to uh, Greg and uh, Louis and Dan Bochov for give a nice introduction to DTC. And uh, first, I want to uh, uh, acknowledge my my co-authors. Uh, There's uh, Lisha, Bernadette, Xiao Wu Bao, and Naomi Sergi. These are the people on the DTC who are working on the uh, hurricane problems. And I also want to take the opportunity to acknowledge the tremendous cooperation we have at EMC under the leadership of Bill Lapenda, Vijay, Yang Kuang, and many others who make this uh, cooperation possible. Um, we uh, heard a lot of discussion about uh, history of hurricanes and uh, also modern days. And I would say over the past several years, past uh, three years, the, one of the most important development in the hurricane problem is NOAA's Hurricane Forecast Improvement Project. I don't know how many people knew about this, but this is a very ambitious goal. The goal here is, in my, uh, my understanding, is in 10 years, we're going to reduce the track error by 50% for day one to day five. And intensity error, again, a 50% reduction. We want to increase the probability of detection for rapid change up to 90% and reduce the force alarm rate 10%. And the last bullet is very important. We want to be able to make hurricane forecast out to seven days. And this is really, in my opinion, very ambitious goal. In particular, when you talk about the last bullet, you want to extend the forecast out to day seven. That means that you really got to number one, be able to do a good job on hurricane genesis. Number two, almost the regional model would not going to be very useful. You got to be able to be doing this from global models. So how are we going to do that? How are we going to accomplish such an ambitious goal? In your opinion, of course, that if you want to do that, you almost got to do significant research and development on all fronts, that including model development, model improvements, that, for example, the physical parameterizations from surface boundary layer to convective parameterization. And you have to have to worry about the ocean and waves, how they couple to the atmospheric model. You want to run high resolution so that you can capture the intensity. You want to do a better job on vortex initialization. And also another important point is that you got to have good observation, both near the core and also over the environment. And you also got to have a way to properly use those information to improve your model initial conditions. And uh, as uh, Rui and, and many others already come in, that ensemble prediction is becoming a very important uh, focus tool. And that's necessary for probability prediction uh, data simulation, and also the multiple model ensemble. And uh, when I look at this goal, I mean, a lot of people have found that, many groups have found that to do research for hurricane improvement. But in the end, who is going to deliver the promise? I would say come back down to the operational center. That is going to be EMC and the NSC. These are the people who are on the line, have to deliver those forecast improvements. And so how are we going to channel all this forecast and all this research on hurricanes and so that we can uh, have transition to operation and deliver those promises. And this is where the DTC comes in. And DTC, as, uh, as Louis introduced, that it was formed around uh, the late 2000s. And the primary function really is to uh, have a functionally equivalent operational environment to test and evaluate new NLP systems were extended periods so that um, the, the research advances can be met into operation. And Louis also pointed out before uh, that in order to accelerate those kind of exchange, it also it would be extremely valuable to have a research community to be using the code that has been used for operation. So in terms of DTC, uh, our current focus on Hurricane is uh, it's focused on the, the edge wall modeling system. And uh, we'd like to facilitate the transfer of that technology between research and operation by creating a framework for the NCEP and the research community so that they have a common framework to collaborate. And uh, our initial focus here is to support the community to use HWOF, which is the current operational system uh, for Hurricane at NCEP. Then we would like to develop and maintain a test and evaluation infrastructure at DTC so that it can help us for pre operational implementation testing and uh, to make sure that the code is, uh, is robust and uh, the NSEP can use it with confidence. And uh, I want to please to tell you that uh, we had a good agreement between EMC and DTC in terms of code management for HWOF. 
And our goal here is that the NSEP and the research community can use the same code, at least for the atmospheric uh, component. And we have actually done quite a bit of, made quite a bit of progress uh, in porting the H, uh, the H warp, operation H warp back into the warp repository. And uh, in the coming year, we're going to be implementing additional uh, features. Uh, for example, uh, a plan for the 2010 upgrades uh, into the warp repository. And later on, also, we'll be uh, looking at uh, features that could be implemented for 2011. So you may think that this is an easy job, but actually it's not. It's actually quite a bit of challenging task. Mm -hmm. In a WOF, uh, in a WOF system repository has been maintained by the MMM division of NCA, and it's been evolving. For example, uh, in 2004, we have the WOF version two, and uh, ever since every year there are new releases, and uh, currently. Uh, we are scheduled to release at World version 3.2. And uh, at, the, up, at the NSAP, the HWARF model under the leadership of uh, Naomi, who developed the HWARF model, was originally based on the version 2 and has not been communicated back to the World repository uh, until, until recently. So you could see that with uh, almost four or five years of uh, uh, separation, there is a quite a bit of uh, differences in the code, even though they all both code WARF and even the NNM uh, core of the code. So uh, this year, our major effort here is to port the NCEPS uh, H WARF operational code back into the WARF repository so that it can be uh, the, the component that, that are important for Hurricane will be residing in the WARF 3.2 that are going to be released. And then later on, we are going to uh, evaluate those components that are intended for the uh, 2010 operation implementation. Again, based on the WOLF version 3.2, will be imported into this uh, 3.2 plus. Then later on, we also be looking at the possible feature that we want to use, NSA want to use uh, for 2011 operation, in, uh, then into the same code. Then through significant testing evaluation, we would hope to be able to have a configuration, a WOF, uh, HWAR configuration for operation. Basically, NSA will be able to configure this, uh, their operational code from the general WOF repository. I want to tell you this is actually big, very significant. There's several reasons for that. Number one, basically any university folks, uh, AOML or whoever research lab, who want to do hurricane research problem, they can use this same code. And whatever they do would let me feedback uh, have a pass to feedback to operation. And number two, I know there's still a lot of people are concerned about my code is ARW, your code is NMM. <laughs> I want to tell you that by putting the, the HWARF code back into the WAP repository, the ARW uh, game can also use all the other features like the Princeton Ocean models, the web coupling, all these things that are being used for the uh, operational HWARF can also be used for ARW. So this actually allows the entire community to work on common code, and there's a path uh, to transfer from uh, research to operation. And I want to, again, give a tremendous amount of uh, kudos to um, our team here, uh, including Xia, Xiaowu, Vijay, and Yongguang. And they, they did a tremendous amount of work in doing this powdering, porting uh, exercise. And uh, for example, this is, they look at 177 cases for the storm that occurred in 2008. And we have a version two, which is the blue line, and a version three, which is the red line. And this is creeper forecast, just to show you the, uh, the reference. And you can see that in terms of track errors, these two versions are almost right on top of each other. And uh, in terms of intensity forecast, there are some, still some small differences in early, early days. Early, early phase, but they are not very large. But you could also see, interestingly, that this is version two and version three, between day, f day four and day five, we actually are doing better than the version two. So I want to tell you that we actually have made tremendous amount of progress, and this, um, the version three will be available for the research community so that you can work on this, and there will be a path for you to transfer to, uh, to operation. And I want to emphasize that DTC, uh, the primary responsibility of DTC is not development. Our focus actually is to facilitate the research to operation and operation to research uh, transition. And this is done through collaboration with many of our partners, 
uh, I could list it over here, and I made me business to you. And then uh, we also be supporting the H5 project for the research to operation uh, transition. And uh, for our testing, uh, we our goal here is to make sure that the code is, re uh, is robust and, uh, and that uh, NCEF can use it with confidence. And in order for, N for DTC to be really be useful, we also want to make sure that uh, NCEF can rely on us for some pre, uh, to do the pre-implementation testing. And in order to, for this to go well, we need to have some protocol. And our protocol is that we like to uh, the, the test the code in the, in the community repository because we otherwise, we're going to have too many versions. And so we prefer to test those officially released codes. And uh, in terms of our testing here, I wanna, we want to emphasize a few points. One is that this is uh, functionally equivalent at the NCEP test environment. And uh, we also want to emphasize its end-to-end -end coupling rounds with the full operational cycling that like the NCEP is doing. And we also be using the same verification standard that the operational uh, folks are doing at the, at the National Hurricane Center at, uh, and at the AMC. And, uh, and so I, at this point, I want to say that if you want to be participating in this testing, we welcome uh, very much on that. And uh, we will be happy to work with you to incorporate your in development into the work repository so that your improvement can be then be evaluated for operation. And also, uh, want to, you, you know that uh, after this workshop, we are going to have a three-day tutorial. And uh, with this, we're going to release the HWOF code to the community. And also um, acknowledge that we're going to have uh, many partners who will be working with us in um, providing this community support that include MQ uh, under version 3.2, maintenance and the release, and the principal, the principal ocean model with the uh, enables the road islands and vortex initializations with uh, EMC and uh, copper with EMC and uh, enables the road islands and vortex tracker from GFDL. And uh, so the, the DTC will be working with MQ so that the documentation website and uh, this help desk and code management are all available to support the broad community. And now I'd like to take a uh, uh, just a uh, few minutes to reflect on what we see as the future. I uh, want to say that um, the two point is that one is we need to make sure that DTC has a functionally equivalent environment with the EMC so that we can do uh, pre-implementation uh, testing that EMC can use it with confidence. And uh, we also want to work with H5 so that the promising new development can be incorporated. And uh, also one of the point I want to make is that there are several research projects being funded by H5 that are using ARW and COEMs. And we also have to have a way of making sure these developments uh, can be also made available for operation. And looking to the future, I also want to say that even though our initial focus is on the h wolf, we should not be limited by that. I think we need to be more forward looking uh, for example, if you are a process for, for hurricane prediction by using the multiple model ensemble, uh, there are things that we can test. We'd be very happy to do that. We also repeatedly been finding that, for example, ensemble common field data simulation seems to be always outperforming the 3D bars. And these are also something that we could also work with the EMC to help make that available. And another point is that, uh, as I mentioned, if you want to make a seven-day forecast, you've got to be dealing with the global models. And uh, in down the road, the DTC should also be involved with the uh, global model predictions. And uh, I remember somebody told me that every time you hear Rick Antis giving a talk, he always uh, show two slides, at least two slides. One of the, one is a, there's a little girl at the, at, the beach, at the beach with a red dress, and the other one is cosmic. <laughs> And uh, he didn't have time to show any uh, cosmic slides, so uh, I take the, uh, uh, <laughs> I'm happy I'll get it to show a few. Uh, I want to say that in terms of that uh, seven-day forecast, and particularly for uh, hurricane genesis, uh, you know, one of the big problems we have is there isn't not very much observation over the ocean. And uh, with uh, radio quotation now, we actually could have a lot of observation over the ocean. And uh, I'm not sure uh, everybody know about this uh, radio quotation 
But the whole idea here is if you put a, a GPS receiver on a small satellite, then you can track the signals from the, from the GPS. Then you can actually have uh, radio quotation sounding at the point of radio, we call the radio, uh, the, the parity point. And you can actually get vertical profile electron density, temperature, and water vapor information from those measurements. And the question, of course, are they any good? Are they, how could they be helpful? The good thing about this uh, kind of observation is it's not limited by, by land. So you could actually have a globally homogeneous uh, measurement, and it's not affected by clouds and precipitations. And shortly after the launch of COSMIC in 2006, we happened to run into a very interesting storm called Hurricane Ernesto. And it shows that it's a Category 1 storm and actually uh, formed over the uh, Western Atlantic. And this shows the satellite images. And if we make a forecast using the NCEP operational analysis at that time without any data simulation for COSMIC, this is what we got. There isn't that much of a development. However, if you assimilate the COSMIC data into the NCEP analysis, this is what we got. And clearly show that the COSMIC does have uh, improvement for the follicle prediction. And further analysis, we actually find the main reason is because uh, the occultation can penetrate crowd and precipitation and provide tremendous amount of useful information on water vapor. And this is work uh, by done by uh, Yongsun Chen, Hui Liu, and Jeff Anderson. And uh, we also have a similar kind of work on the Western Atlantic. This is a Xiaomi case uh, for 2008. And we also have the same improvement that we find that if you incorporate the cosmic data, you can do a genesis much better. And if, if, if you do data simulation without cosmic, we find that actually you got uh, over development. And uh, I just want to finalize by showing you a few slides that uh, this is the cosmic sounding we have in a day. This is the cosmic sounding we will have in a week. And uh, no one now is working uh, hard to implement a cosmic 2 program. And this is what we expect to see in a day. So we should we have tremendous amount of opportunity to improve uh, hurricane genesis and seven day forecast. Thank you very much. I don't have it.